Hey everybody, hey, uh, really excited to get home a home game here in front of our fans at US Bank Stadium. Um, you know, some of our guys going into year two haven't haven't seen this place full and see how uh, special that it is. So um, that'll be a, a real treat this week. I know our players are excited for that and excited for this opportunity against a really uh, well coached and uh, disciplined defense. So any questions? What do you think worked so well for the offense in the first half last week? Yeah, I think uh, I think our players made plays. You know, our our, our best guys stepped up and and made some made some critical plays. I thought uh, I thought our protection and our run game was was excellent and it helped spur everything else. Safe so to say, it was. Think, how much do you think the offensive line improved from week one to week two? Uh, they they made improvements. Uh, I think I think they were uh, you know Phil did a good job. Coach Paul Amato did a great job. All the assistant coaches Brian Keenan, Andrew. Um, you know, just getting the guys dialed back in and uh, get them focused on the task at hand. But, you know, they just played our, our offensive line played cleaner and just allowed us to, to have success. We weren't, you know, shooting ourselves in the foot. So uh, doesn't mean that goes away. You just keep staying on the details and we got to keep harping on those things. A lot of guys have talked about KJ Osborne in terms of his ability to move around, play multiple different spots, just alignments. How does that help you as a coordinator vary your approach when you do have to pivot to three wide as much as you have? Yeah, it just gives it uh, gives us, you know, me a lot of confidence. And uh, if someone goes down or we got to change personnel, KJ is going to figure out how to how to get it done. So he's been he's been impressive with it, his mental approach, uh, but that's just not recently. It's just how he's that's uh, how he approached off season. So he's just continuing that to the games. How much of that time this summer? Because you had mentioned him sit, jumping in there for Jefferson or Thielen this summer. How much do you think that time helped him just getting all that time at training camp preseason with that starting offense? Yeah, definitely. Definitely more time on task for him. And he's just he's got confidence, and he should, because he's, he's, uh, he's executing at a high level. Matt, what does Dee need to do to find a little bit more playing time as a receiver? Uh, he's doing everything we've asked him to do. He's doing a, a heck of a job, and you know there's guys in front of him that are producing well too. So he's just got to uh, be patient, and when his opportunity comes, I know he'll do he'll do a great job. How's Darisaw been progressing? Yeah, uh, well, it's really good to have him out there in practice, working with the other, uh, you know, the rest of the offensive line. Um, I know. You know, Eric Sugarman have to answer that better than me, but I'm just really pleased to see him back out there. He's been through a lot trying to get to this point, and uh, he's worked really hard behind the scenes just to get out there and get a jersey at practice. So, uh, you know, I know, I know it has not been easy for him, but he's done everything we've asked him to do in order to get back to where he's at now. You guys hope to get him some teamwork at any point soon? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, just gonna you know ease him in there and and, and not uh, you know not overdo it too fast. I want to make sure we do it the right way. With that said, I mean, how do you go about trying to figure out what that right window is? I mean, do you look at the schedule and say, hey, we've got an early buy. Maybe that's to our advantage about when you imp try to implement him in the lineup? Yeah. Really rely on, on Suge and, uh, and Coach Zimmer for, for that guidance. Obviously, uh, Phil is involved in that too, but rely on the training staff heavily to see what their expertise thinks. Seems like uh, Kirk has connected with KJ and Adam a handful of times this year. It's some big moments with a slant kind of over the middle. Is there what's led to the success of that concept? I just think uh, for Adam and Kirk, just time on task, obviously, and uh, and KJ is doing some good things. I just we've had we had an off season. You know, we had uh, we had we had OTAs, we had training camp. Those guys had time to gel. I think that was really important. Or, uh, there were five instances in the game where you, you ran it with Dalvin on a second and ten or longer. I guess what's the what's the theory on that trying to gain yards in a traditional passing situation? Yeah, well, I think he's just trying to get the ball to our best players, and Dalvin Dalvin's one of our best players. You know, just trying to find uh, plays we think that are going to work, and you know, anything to Dalvin. Dalvin left, Dalvin right, uh, hand it off, throw it to him. Just trying to get the ball to our guys that can make plays. It seemed like Kirk had success with those quick passes, getting the ball quickly. Is that something you're more able to do with a veteran quarterback who can make reads at the line and then can make reads and progress at, you know, when the ball is in his hand? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you know his ability to get the ball out on time inaccurately is a, a culmination of uh, just a career long of, of repetition. And we have a lot of confidence in his decision making. That's the number one thing we talk about is in our quarterback room, decision-making, timing, and accuracy, decision-making being number one. There's a lot going on pre-snap, and uh, 
he doesn't just show up Sunday and do it. It's it's part of his you know his preparation during the week. So I think he he spends a lot of time on that prep and allows him to play faster. And he can always get better as as well as all of his teammates. And we're always trying to trying to improve.